Hey there, and welcome back to this video tutorials on Enova technology and how to mesh using Enova and use Enova to set up open fun cases. So in the previous video, the mixed and elbow video somewhere in the description or the screen, you will have the link there. We address now many uh, many techniques how to mesh using Enova, all the steps you now to do the meshing. So it was a very long series of video. Right now, let's work in in, in <clears throat> addressing the, the problem right away, which is how to generate the meshes. So I was going to show you know how it is to generate good quality meshes using Enova, and also <clears throat> how to set up the case in open phone so here we're going to work with this case the amet body so let me bring it here so also in the description you will have the link to get the geometries you have it and this is a geometry very classical case in the stern aerodynamics cfd so the previous case that we introduced in nova very simple case but what there is many techniques it was internal flow now we have external flow external aerodynamic nothing changed but just to make this <coughs> differentiation some people likes to to do it but nothing changed so this is a geometry we have very well now but i will add a small twist in the geometry okay so we have the amet body there so it's it's called that we have the car there but instead of using this support there we add some wheels there Okay, so this is a small modification that we're going to do. And what is interesting when we do the simulation, we're going, we need to impose boundary conditions. And we're going to assume that the wheels are rotating with a given angular velocity you now corresponding to the forward velocity. So to do that, when you do the CAD, okay, you need to know the position and look at that. I'm working in on Che, I go here and I have the position on the center of mass rotation of this wheel. And you can do this all the same stuff with all the wheels. So look at that, we have all these values. So when I'm going to set up the, the, the case in open phone, I, uh, this is what I'm doing, extracting the, the center of the wheel and then the normal to the wheel and so on. Okay, so that being said, we have the geometry. Remember that we need to have a good cat geometry, okay? A good mesh depending on the cat geometry. So all these uh, <clears throat> lines or faces that you see here, the CAT tool that we're going to use that is always going to see every, everything. You also have the option to use STLs. I'm going to vilify a lot STLs. I'm going to rant about a lot about STLs that they are not good, but it's true, okay? It's, you can do the, the geometry, please get a good geometry support in a good format. And we talk also in an introductory video that the best format is a stat or parasolid format. Try to avoid IGES and please do not use STLs. STL you use it only if you have, you know, something that was a 3D scan or there's no other way to do it. Okay, working with the steel is tricky and we're going to work with another series of video that we have mentioned the education, how to manipulate those steel, but it's tricky. But that being said, we have the geometry, okay? So you have the option to do everything at the cat level so you can create the whole domain and then Okay, you can read it in your tool or you can just export in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the long road. Okay, I'm going to export this. So you select everything and then you can export. Okay, so here in, this is specific for Unshed, you click export and as I say, select a good format. Okay, you have all this, I recommend instead, please avoid this STL or the collateral, things like that. So I already have the geometry, everything set up. Okay, so let me go and let me launch Enova. Okay, so I have my Enova. So the first step is reading the geometry. Have it here and see that we have the step file. I will open uh, to mention something. You have all the formats here compatible. As you see, there are many formats, but also you have these options here. So this only applies with STL. Okay, so as you recall, for those using open phone, the feature angles and so on, and scale it. So be careful, you have some options there, okay? And let me go here, okay? And it's going to import the geometry, okay? So this is what we have, okay? The geometry, and see the exactly the same features that you are seeing your cat, okay? In your fully professional cat, exactly the same you are going to see in and all. And this is the power. Now you, you, you can add refinement in these lines, faces. So you click, you start to click so that you access 
all the faces, exactly the same faces that you're going to have in your cat model. Okay, just to mention something extra, as you click here, you have preferences and our auctions, and you can set some auctions, for instance, when importing, you can set it how you want to import. So sometimes you can have large files or you can have assemblies and you can select now import all those groups, the names that you, you, you gave in the files and so on. Okay. You also know other options there just to mention that. So we import it and see that we talk about the ideas volumes is important and you know what we're, we're going to mesh. So for the moment, we're going to prepare the geometry and you can click here delete volumes okay and you have that okay so we don't want the volume for the moment but before when you go to mesh you need to have that volume so basically now we can do and prepare the geometry so prepare the geometry and let me do something because i already have this case ready here here so i'm going to skip in one point on the steps no i don't want to i don't want to go through everything so see that i have the geometry i prepare everything so see that we talk about creating groups to divide the geometry now to create those boundary conditions and so on. Okay, so everything prepared there. I will leave it there and just to show you some basic steps. So the first thing is that here you need to do is create a domain. So remember, you can create that domain, you can get it from here, there is no problem, and probably that is the best way to do it. But I want to take the long road just to show you more options. So if you click here, so you can click here and you can click any of these volumes option and in the geometry option, and it's going to fit a box around that body and now simply I can go and create my external domain so I'm not following any guidelines so as I mentioned I already have everything set up there but if you want to have the exactly the same dimensions remember that you have the cat geometry so you can come here and this is how you did it in the cat how you want it to, to look like okay but it's up to you so you click there and you have coordinate here in the bottom and so on so there is no problem but let me create something fast now okay okay and you have it there okay and I don't, I don't want to go into details probably remember that also we have the wheels there and let me go here and change orientation so you have different reference error and i want to orient now i want y negative and set i want it up and there you go you have that and um, for instance you can click come here in view right click at view and you have a view there remember to save everything every now and then so i will call it working and this is my domain but look at that what is happening here is that you have the wheels that are touching the ground and there are many techniques to, to to deal with this and actually i have a complete series of video how to deal with wheels it's very tricky so there are there is some people that add kind of a step here and also raise the geometry some people that intersect it some people that will do this fusion here and define some strange nothing cuts and things like that what i was going to do is just a little bit up just to intersect it okay i will cut so i will need to do the boolean as i say this is an operation that is better to do here in the cat level it's a way much easier friendlier but just to show you that you have some manipulation capabilities in an hour you can modify your, your geometry so i'm happy with this my domain okay remember that i already have it and i'm not going to use the exact dimension just to save time and if you are happy with the primitive that you put it there you can also give your coordinates now at and that's it we have the box so this will be my external geometry okay if you want to play with the transparency you go there and this is it so now that we have this, this will be our domain. We need to do some intersections here, but also remember that we need to define those groups to assign boundary conditions. So if you start to click here, right, left click, right click, and see that you have the option move to group and you start to give name. So I will call it inlet. I will call it here outlet, all these okay control for multiple selections okay so just faces uh, and i will call it a slip and then you have here the ground okay move to group ground and then you have the rest that is the amet body so in my final geometry see that i divided though i have singular wheels and so on so wheel one two three and so on okay so you can do all those steps later i will stay with this here so now that we have here we need to intercept 
this wheel with the ground you know, to create. So look at that, that what we have here, that intersection. So we need to do that manipulation. And remember that here you have auctions knowing and know what to do that. So basically we want to intersect surfaces. So see that you select. So I would press the key F on my keyboard to force to select only faces. Otherwise it can select also edges, notes and so on. Or you can go here and make only faces selectable. Okay, but you have the, the shortcut. So select that. Let me also here, here, and rotate a little bit, select there. So now that you selected this when you are going to intercept, look at that, I will do right click. You have many options, so feel free to play with all the options. I'm not going to go into details in this video, probably in some other videos, but just feel free to play with that, okay? Get a very simple case and and play and see the, the outcome, okay? There is no substitute to practice and trial and error, okay? I will just give you just basic explanations. So here we want to do intersect for faces. And that's it, okay? Look at that, we intersect it. If I select this face, see that we intersect it, we cut it, but I want to stress that surface is still is in there. Okay, and actually see that you have a yellow line. So remember color coding is very important in ANOVA. So the colors, when you have black lines, this is what we want. Means that two surfaces are connected, that's all. That is the ideal case. It's a yellow line means that you have uh, three surfaces or more connected to that edge. Okay, so it is redundant, we want two, but I know that what we have, a problem that we have there. So also the other color is red. It means that only one surface is connected to the to that line, and then you have blue. That means that that line is not connected to anything, so that doesn't do anything. But look at that. I select here, right-click, remove, erase that surface. I don't need it anymore. And see that these segments here becomes red. As I told you, it is connected only to one surface. So you can select that edge. I will press the letter E. You can select edge, and right-click, and see that you can check, for instance, uh, select atta attach faces. So I want to see what faces are attached to, to this edge. And it's just this one. And you can do the same here, right click, and you can check what is attached to what. You can see all the surfaces attached. So it will be one internal that is attached there. Okay, so feel free to play with those options, but now press F, select, remove, okay. You can do multiple selections. I'm doing just one at a time just to show you. And then I can select here, see that this one, okay, it wasn't removed, you still have it there. And as you click now, remove, see what happens, that now the line becomes black, this is what you want, and voila, you cut a hole there. This is what we wanted from the beginning. Okay, so look at my transparency. So this is what we're doing, okay? So now let me go here and I will do that for, I will select everything, select, select, Select. Okay, so this is part of the geometry preparation. Ah, oh, you need to press Control. Don't forget that. So I uh, mentioned being, it's better to do this at the cut level. You see that here probably can be a little bit tricky, but you you have access to all the topology that you have in the cat. So that is incredibly powerful. Uh, okay, so that's uh, ta -ta 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 here, and now I can intersect our faces. Okay, and there you go, it works. Sometimes it might give you problems, okay? So do not be afraid about, about that. Remember that you have undo there. So can remove sins and let me set it there, 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 there. I'm being a little bit sloppy, but it doesn't matter. Remove, and there you go. So remove there, remove there. Remove there, remove there, remove there. Okay, select, remove, and see that now everything becomes black. Okay, uh, okay, I didn't click control. Remove, okay, bam, 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 bam. So you have, when you select, select, right click, you do the operation, I want to remove, and there you have a message, okay, so let's say that you want to always delete neighbor's elements, or yes, it's up to you what you want to do, 
okay but in this case yes is okay or always so now th let me put transparency and this is what we have as you see we prepare the geometry so what we have is we have the ground we have the inlet outlet slip walls and then we have the body if you want to create the wheels that in this case just select the wheel so let me do the selection for for one wheel okay i don't know going to do everything so here here you can select these two and then see how you can hide those faces and now you can do the selection here okay okay this is, will be tricky also the ground so let me hide the ground so you select here 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 let me select all the wheels so let me se separate all the wheels in a single group but it's not ideal you need to separate it in different groups because remember that later you need to define uh, the center of rotation of each individual wheel. Here's just for demonstration, I would put it everything in a single group. So right click and I will go move to group. I would call it wheels and then this one I will call it just rename. And there you go. This is your geometry. Okay, so ideally, hopefully you follow now all the steps you are going to get let me hide this one and show you just the geometry you're going to get something like this okay so separate it you have all the surfaces and so on so at this point you have your geometry remember that every now and then save everything so now that you're happy with the geometry this is the ideal case that you have all lines are black and i want to stress that all the topology that you have in your cat model you're going to access everything so this is what is called a topology based meshing tool okay you can access everything so you have absolute control the other approach that also in another series of video you know that we have mesh education we're going to to do that differentiation of you know, the topology base and then also the fault tolerant or for dirty geometries those nasty dreaded stls that i <laughs> i vilify a lot i don't like please avoid avoid stl use stl only only if you absolutely need it and this is also we'll talk to to you know directly to the open phone user so i know many users that that they started to do cfd with open phone and for them meshing is means stls and absolutely by no means that is, that is the meaning a mesh you need to get a good uh on uh, underlying geometry do not use stl okay so usually you now because people have been working with snappy x mesh all the time they always think oh yeah the the the, the file geometry to use in an stl so by no means okay try to avoid that okay so now that we have this okay we're ready to move to the next step but before moving to the next step you next uh, step you need to create the volume so you select everything right click and you create a volume that's all okay so here we're telling that this is my volume i want everything inside you can do more complex things okay you can have multiple volumes and so on so that will be more advanced videos but here's just a single volume okay so i don't have any mesh leaking so important to mention so for instance if you have here uh, a red line means that that face surface is not connected to the other and the mesh is going to leak inside the model and that might, might be a problem that's why you want everything you know, to be black to avoid those potential problems okay so now that you are there we can move to mesh okay so we say that the geometry is okay and now we move to to the meshing stage so in meshing stage here is super easy so click here and click here so you bring global parameters and local parameters in local parameters i always like to click here open mesh parameter settings and this will bring this other window that i like to work for some reason i prefer to to work with this one and I, i'm used to this one i used to to work with ice and cfd ice and cfd have something like that and just to stress something and to point out something that the developer from often know is the same people that develop ice and cfd so if you have used ice and CFD, you will see many similarities. It's just because that. Okay, so now we need to define since, and at this point we need just to give global parameters. So you can go and measure something, and let's say that some, if you don't have idea of your dimensions, so you can you have something here that let me hide these two faces, and you can select for instance this face, right click, and see that you have this set face mesh parameters put a value there 
and see this triang triangle or tetra there. So this is your reference size. So here you have your visual reference. So look at the meshing, it's extremely visual. So for now again, addressing that open fund community, in the snappy, this doesn't exist. And this also can make it a little bit difficult. But let's say in my case, I'm happy, I think it's 0 0.01 is a good value. And you can do the same with external geometry. Okay, so you can go here and a 0 0.1 will look something like that. So those things to be good values. So I would say my maximum value global, okay. And I would put it lower, okay, than the one I define 18 this is for curvature and i want to leave it like this you, so if you want a pure triangular mesh you select that one or if you don't select this one ANOVA will try to fit quads where it seems it will give you better quality but also it will translate in lower cell count okay i want to do the surface mesh and that's all so we're going to work here these are the options that we're going to use global parameters topological mesh okay so we're doing topological mesh the other one that is the one called full tolerant or string wrap is this option okay so we have these two meshes meshing tools the most powerful one and the one we should use is the topology base so now that we define that we can go and do the local definition so see that you can access everything here so let's say that we mentioned that the amet body a value 0 0.01 it was something okay I can say that the grind will be 0 0.2 and um, maybe the wheels that I know that I have some curvature there. Let me put 0 0.02 there and that's it. Okay. I don't need to define a minimum. It will take this automatically but it's the one you can define. Also the default value. Okay. And the size ratio by default is 1.2. Okay. So let's do the first step that is generating the surface mesh so this kind of topolo topology based method is called also you know uh, surface to volume or bottom to top okay because you first grow do your surface mesh and then you start to grow your volume mesh boundary layer and so on okay so we start from a surface mesh surface only and if you have something of really good quality, you know that your next step will be a good one. So this is what we have. See that the parameters we define and see that it's super fast. Okay, nice. And if you want to add some transparency or you can hide faces, there you go. Okay, so let me disable, probably would be better to hide these faces here. And look at that, this is what we have, okay. The wheels probably I exaggerate a little bit there, but let's do something fast like this. So let's, I'm happy with this, but maybe look at it inside here. You have this wall. Maybe it would be better to have something there finer. Okay. To avoid fast transition from small to large and talking about quad cells. So see that here in a way automatically identify that say, well, maybe it's better to add quads here. So automatically we'll, we'll add uh, quads where where it says that it will give you better qualities but also will reduce your cell cell can so that that i want to do now is that add another refinement level in this internal wall so we didn't create a group for that okay we have these groups and we can access that but remember that that belongs to your geometry so you can go back in geometry and you can do that modification here okay so you can create a group from that or you can directly assign that size in there. So let me hide the mesh, bring back the geometry. I don't want to see this, this is it. Okay, so you can click there and you create a new group, move to group and just to show you, we'll call it, I don't know, wall one. And the group appears automatically here and you can define your level there. So you can put 0 0.05. The other option, so here you keep things in order. The other option that you can do it directly here. So you select the face, right click and see that you have this action here. Set face parameters. The same one that we used to, to, to have that visual reference, you can assign the value there. So I will say again, 0 0.05. You have different methods also. So you have triangles. A map is to create to force quads, but that works only when you have a, ma a mappable face, a face that you can map. Usually it's a face with four vertex. By no means, this is a face with four vertex. You can add those 
virtual vertices. But okay, but for the moment, just always use none or, or put triangle there. So you see that here now I'm adding the sizing here. This sizing that I added here, selecting in geometry, doesn't appear here because it's not a group, okay? It is something that is in my geometry, okay? So you have to be careful with that because you need to track those sizes, okay? Because it might happen that you can add it to lines also. You can select a line and add that, those sizes later we're going to see. So if you, you don't remember that, you can get lost. So to know what sizes you have add, you can come here in, in geometry, right click and see that you have show geometry mesh parameters and here you can see all the mesh parameters that you you add okay directly at the geometry level okay remember so for instance if you want to know what is this entity you can come here and see that find entities okay and you have an id number here type this one 103 and 109 so you can put it there and you can find that or 109 find okay soon select da, 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 da. and you can look for oops you can look for those surfaces so find you have it there so that one that became there pink and the other is 103 probably is, okay so you see that is this here I put also a refinement value there, okay? So you can click there, right click, and you can erase it. You put zero, you erase it. Let me make it larger, okay? So be careful about that, keep track of everything. So now that you added that, you can go back and do your mesh, surface mesh, remember. So now with the new parameters, okay, look at that. We I make it larger, look at the transition from small to large. And here I added that sizing using a group that I defined there or using directly in the geometry, okay? In the geometry tab. So remember that you need to switch between tab, tabs. So as you see, very simple. This is the stuff that definitely you cannot do with an STL or actually here in Innova you can do it because you have a very, very good geometrical kernel. Okay, so now let me talk about that. We have the geometry and let's, also assign some sizing in an edge okay so in an edge it's also that you need to do it at the geometry level so let me go back to the geometry let me hide the geometry let me bring and let's say that i want to add a sizing in this edge so select the edge i will press the key e just to select edges and i select this edge let me select this one okay and i would like to add a sizing there right click and you have something similar set edge patterns and let's put here something like the maximum size I want it to be 0 0.01. Okay, so you can go like this and put that and let me show you 0 0.05 in those two there. And now let me select this and I will select a different method. Okay, something that I really like this method, but you need to know where to use it. 0 0.01 and then print prison height. 0, 0, usually it's a good idea to put here like half the maximum value, but I will go 0 0.02. And you will allow create prisons there. And let's see what happens here. So remember, if you want to keep tracking of all these sizes that you add in the geometry, you go here in show geometry, and then you can find where do you have those, okay? So now that you define that, go back mesh here, click here, and hi there and see what is happening so here it's clearly that we added the sizing and it works uniformly look at it here it added automatically quads but look at what happened here i use that option that i let the mesh tool to create prisons in an edge very nice feature very cool okay so minimum size it will grow to the maximum size Okay, so for instance, here it might be interesting to have this because here you, you, you have done the geometry, you know that here you have some vortices. So doing this one might give you better fidelity without the need to add 
so many triangles okay to resolve the small features in this direction or in the y direction you want to resolve those features if you want to do the same using triangles here you are going to have a, an incredibly large amount of triangles so this is the idea of doing this you now putting this prison in regions where you want to concentrate a lot of cells okay using large aspect ratios okay okay so basically we have it there no problem this was creating automatic automatically okay so at this point you are happy with this always remember now and then so we have a surface mesh after you have a surface mesh you need to do the boundary layer mesh which is this icon here to do the boundary layer is very simple you select the face where you want to grow that boundary layer and that's all okay so let's say for instance i want to grow the boundary layer in the body this one and i say you turn it on here you can do the same here okay by the way you can select but as i mentioned uh, i prefer to work here for some reason and you select the number of layer i want to put five layers and if you want you can add the height of the first layer okay if you don't put anything by default the height of the first layer will be 20 percent of the size of the cell in the surface so if you have different sizes it would change okay it's up to you so in this case let me say that i want to add 0 0 0.001 0 .0, okay i want to add let's say six layers and in the ground on the ground i want to add just two layers or three layers i don't put anything it will create it will grow automatically using this factor of 1.2 you can add it to the wheels also if you want okay but i uh, here i just will do it fast okay but you can do it uh, no problem so as you click here okay so remember first the surface mesh now you do boundary layer and i have to stress on or say something that it will give you always it will create your inflation layer very good qualities okay i haven't seen this fail creating the the inflation layer always as the first try will give you a good inflation layer so see that it created here some quads just to control transition that is not related to a boundary layer but now that we have a boundary layer you can explore your mesh so see here that you have your cut planes put a cut a cut plane there so let me move it to put it in the wheel just to show you that it didn't grow in the wheel because we didn't say so. And there you go. Perfect boundary layer. So remember that we fixed the size here. It's always 0 0.01 and it will grow automatically. Okay. So it will grow until reaching, like we talked during the, the mix enable tutorial, until reaching the maximum number of layers, like in this case, or reaching the transition from the last layer to the outer mesh that is 20%. Okay. In this case, it's automatically stopping at this i would show you later something and look at that we have it here here remember that we have a group that i call it wall one i didn't put the boundary layer here so see that nicely it, it, it caught that okay so it works very well and at the bottom and the ground as i mentioned it will change according to the dimension of the cell on the surface okay very nice mesh and let me move here to the front wheel A little back there okay and there you go in this case see that now we have the boundary layer there because here we assign that we didn't split that this amet bodies we assign it direct di directly in the in the surface topology okay good meshes good boundary layers all the time at the first try so you can save I usually like to proceed like this. I save the step, so I will call it now BL, so boundary layer. And then now that you have the boundary layer, you can go to the next step, which is creating the prismatic layer. So if I click here, so surface to volume, you can clearly see here the meaning. First surface mesh, then boundary layer, and then you grow your prisma, uh, your 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 volume mesh. Okay, so in this case, we start with a tetra, 
you can use a tether it's up to you people doing this continuous gallery and a lot use it a lot finite volume also but i have seen that falling ball in finite volumes are disappearing a little bit or the use is not widely diffused anymore now it's more polyhedra which is the next cell type that i'm going to show so see that it's a very nice mesh let me put a cup plane there and this is what we have okay perfect mesh okay this is what we want if so you want to measure quality you have here all these quality metrics so probably the most important if you are an open phone user is orthogonality or non orthogonality depends how you call it and open phone is very picky but look at that what we have here 81 which for me is acceptable okay you can then click here to see where in particular you have those those cells so okay now i can go here select here you see the count click in show and then when you go here in group list you're going to have diagnostic and you can see that it might happen sometimes that you don't see this group list list you can enable or disable that here also you right click in the tab and you can select what you want to see there so sometimes the groups hit the group list might disappear. Look at that. You have any more group lists. So you can click here and you bring it back or you can right click in a tab and then look for group list. Uh, so should be somewhere there, but probably faster here. Okay, it's up to you. If it disappear for some reason, you can bring it back. Okay, so let's see where do, do we have those nasty cells. Okay, there we go. Actually, there are, not, there are faces. Okay, so you have a, a large count of, and those are faces. So if I bring back, okay, so it's the other phase, okay, where I have, I suspect that where, where I have the smallest uh, ba -da -ba 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 cells. And um, well, look at that, what we have here. Automatically put here to get better mesh quality. It put these quads there and uh, let's see again where are those okay actually yeah i know so usually the wheels as i mentioned talking about wheels there is a lot to say there so you said it's there where you are going to have those bad quality so there is a lot of treatment to avoid those but this shouldn't be a problem for your simulation okay Oh, don't worry about that. But usually when you have wheel and these intersections, there is where you are going to have all the problems. So, well, you have seen how to do this diagnostic, the cut plane. And now that you have your Tetra, this is how I will save as. You can save it like you did the BL. Now you can go and do the save as a Tetra. Put it like T. So these are the steps. So if you want to go back to BL and you want to use some some of the parameter for Tetra, you can do it. So it's like doing an ad restarting. Whoops, this is not going to do anything. Or I don't know. Oh, let me stop it. Okay. Well, I think it ah uh, it erases the mesh. It was my mistake. I know it didn't do anything. I hope so. Probably it tried to smooth out everything. So now that you want to create the poly meshes, as I mentioned, this is the one that I'm starting now. The community is starting to use. Okay. You click there and now it's going to do, okay, look at that uh, mesh, right click. There is a option here, messages, and it's going to give, you know, information what is happening, what it's doing. So this is what I know it's doing. Okay, so this this polyhedral mesh, you know, the starting point is a tetra or triangle, triangular mesh. So what it's going to do, you get a good tetra and then from the tetra it's going to join those tetra to create the poly mesh so it's like a dualizer is called and now i talk to to, to the open fund community i think it's poly dual mesh or something like that it's called in, in open fund so it is converted from tetra uh, to polyhedral general polyhedral so see here that you have the step the steps usually it will if you, have, if you have a good quality Tetra mesh, it will inherit the properties. Sometimes the quality will be a little bit higher, but the meshes are, are beautiful. One big advantage is that it will reduce the cell count greatly, okay? By a, by a factor of something that can be between 
two or six times, okay? And personally speaking, also, it computes better the gradients. These poly cells have more faces, have the tendency to compute better the, the gradients. So let's wait here. Let's see what is happening. Well, what is working? You, you can. So let me change to this tab there because you already have one solution. Okay, well. So just to mention that I created my domain according to the dimensions that I have in the in the Unshape document. I split everything in wheels. I apply different refinement factors and so on. Also, I have a density box that I will show you how to create it. Okay, we have seen that already, but just to show you again, and you can have multiple density boxes and so on. Okay, so to create those density boxes, there are two, two techniques. Okay, the easiest one is this one that you create a box there without modifying the geometry. The other technique is that you go, you modify the geometry, you create different volumes, and then you have that share interface and so on. That can be tricky a little bit, but it's not a problem. Okay, so here we have geometry, and there you go. A nice poly mesh, okay. So I love these meshes, but okay, I don't want to pushes you to use this. It's, it will be up to you to evaluate, but they have very, very nice properties, these meshes. Okay. Beautiful. Even visually, that, that is my first criterion to check is if it is a good mesh. It has to be, be visually, it has to be very appealing. So now if I open orthogonality, as I mentioned, you have the tendency now to be a little bit larger than the tetra. Okay. But then you need just to, to see, well, in this case, fantastic. It improve actually the mesh. Okay, seventy eight. Okay, and if you want to see where do you do you have those low quality because that is not about quality. Bad quality will be more than eighty five. You just click there, show. Okay, and it's going to create, select all the cells that you have within this group of orthogonality. You have here excuseness and so on. Excuseness aspect ratio, minimum distance, minimum volume, and this is a quality. You no, know, it's a metric. I will say that it's a mixture between all this stuff. It's something normalized between seed and one. Okay, so the best mesh is one, but that is difficult to get. The ideal value to have something acceptable will be 10 to the minus three, but I don't use much that. For those using Fluent, for instance, it will be equivalent to the quality metric using Fluent. Okay, so I can, you have the cell count also there and so on. Okay, so let's see where, where do you have, we have those low quality cells. So I can go here and let's, okay, let's say, okay, I suspect that everything is uh, close to the wheels. Okay, usually there in this thing, thing cut is where you have those, those problematic cells, okay. And as I mentioned, there are different treatments to avoid that, okay, that is a very well known fact. So one treatment is that you, for instance, to avoid looking at you have it there, you can put you now in a small box here just to, to raise the surface or, or the whole body. There is another technique you now that to avoid that one, usually here you have your your boundary layer growing. In this case, we, we didn't add it, but if we add the boundary layer in the wheels, you will see also that more, more back quality cells. So what you do is that you create a small region around the wheel let me show you so let me let me sketch my my screen so you're going to split your geometry in surfaces and you create a region like this and in this region you don't grow the boundary layer and you grow it here but also you can put a smaller cell size here just to avoid those problems okay so those are some techniques that you have I exaggerated there now, I put it a little bit large, but it's usually it's a small region and you can control that. Okay, so this is this is it. These are all our steps, and the next step will be just doing the open phone simulation that you go, you click here and you set up everything. Okay. But before doing that, also remember always save everything. Okay, so I save it there. And that's it, okay. One, two, three meshing. Super easy doing the mesh. As you see, we spend most of the time in the geometry. If you had exported that, the whole domain, everything intersected, it will have been just import, create the groups, 
create the volume, boom, assign meshing parameters. So let's go to this case that I already prepared and let's revisit everything, okay, all the actions. So see that I divide, divide the inlet, outlet, I divided the wheels, okay, and these are my parameters, no emission parameters, they're gonna put the high, also I changed the high ratio, you know, the aspect ratio of the boundary layer here, so they are controlling boundary layer. So extremely simple, as you can see doing this, let's visualize the mesh and let me hide the geometry. And you have it here. And also I added you no know, these quad cells there because you have those vortices and maybe you would like to solve better there. And we have a density box. Look at that, we refine the mesh in that density box. To add those density boxes is relatively easy. So that is, remember in geometry, you have primitive to create domains or geometries now, but in mesh, you have primitive to create density. So for the moment you have this one, but it can, it can be extended out to arbitrary shapes and so on. But this is the most general one, but there, there are some, the other technique that I mentioned that you can split the domain in volumes. But for instance, you want to create a box and see that you have it there. Like we did for, 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 for the density of the domain, just move, you can insert the values manually there, or you just go here, move, reduce, and you create your box there. Okay, for, let me say that I want to create a box. Okay, just in the rear part of the, of the, of the car. Put it there, move there. So it's very handy with the mouse, you can do it also. Giving directly the coordinates. You put it there, and then when you define here the size, okay, it still is very large. There you go. So see that this is what we have. Okay, so your sign design and now everything inside this volume is going to be forced to be this dimension. Okay, I'm not going to create it. You can have multiple densities. And let me put a, a cut plane just to show you what happened here. Uh, put it there in the middle. Okay, so uh, 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 I didn't read the, okay, so let me read the geometry with the bam, 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 mesh, this one. I just, I read the, the one, the, the, the surface mesh. Okay, so remember, but you can bring that, it's not necessary, I always like to, just to see the values, put the cut in there. Okay, so depending on the mesh size, it is getting the cut planes, computing quality. Well, you're very well aware that can be time consuming. So this is what happened here. So the density box is this one, see that a nice refined mesh. This is a very nice property now for those who like excess because they are aligned with the flow. Look at that, we can force this to be aligned with the flow. Okay, I really enjoy that. That can be set here. Remember, we talk about this in the mixing elbow, this action. So if you disable this action, it will be more random distribution. I like to, to have that, but it's up to you. Okay, so we have boundary layer, top, bottom. Also here we have in the wheels, okay. We put this refinement there. So we're ready to go. We have a good mesh. You can click here and will bring the the orthogonality okay which is the most critical one if you are working with open phone is you're using fluid or commercial software that can digest anything so i see that we have 86 okay that is acceptable it's margin and there i know and probably you follow the same guidelines so look at what i put in there the values so have it there you will see that those cells are all around the wheels or some intersection here okay so they are not critical okay and there are not many and to stress that okay let me bring it back that is not a number of, of, of total cells it's a number of faces so. and sometimes you can see that see that you, you have here 22 faces okay Th those are not elements it's number of faces Okay, and that probably can translate in three, four, five 
uh, elements, back quality elements. So let's see, let's see. Okay, let's click here. Show. And you can do, when you do this, you need to do first the tetra. So do the tetra, measure or take note of the number of elements and then move to to poly and take note of the number of elements. You will see that it will reduce the cell count by a lot. Okay, I don't recall in this case, probably a factor of four or six. Okay, so we have the diagnostic here. Let me hang everything and look at that. We have those there. So here I can clearly see that that is a wheel. Here also is a wheel, so I can bring back. Okay, the regions around the wheel. In this case, we have boundary layers, so that's why. So that is suspected. As you eliminate those wheels, this will be a perfect mesh. And just to compare that, we have like 400,000 cells. Let's go to Tetra here. And let's see how many cells do we have to Tetra. So at this point, we have the mesh, okay? So we're measuring this quality mesh. So see that we have 1.7 million. So it's a factor of about four, 4.5 something like that. We managed to reduce the cell count maintaining a similar quality, okay? And a mesh with much better properties in poly. So now that you have the mesh, you are happy with everything. We move to the next step, which is setting the open phone simulation. So as you go here, okay, set up, and then you go here in this one, click there, and this is going to bring all open phone auctions. So in my case, okay, I just to stress something, it might take a little a little bit long, okay, well in this case it was fast. Sometimes it can take just to start like 40, 60, 90 seconds. That is not a problem, okay? It might happen. Okay, in this case it, it was fast. So you bring everything and all the auctions that you have in the dictionaries, everything can be controlled here. Okay, very handy. Okay, you have everything in a nice GUI. But what is <coughs> What is more important is that you go here in, in, in this one, the last one dictionary, you can save your mesh, okay? And when you save your mesh, you are going to save a template case that then you can modify. Okay, so now see that it's frozen a little bit. So to save your mesh, do it here, do not do it here. See here you will go export and you have open phone. Do not do it there, do it here. You go in this last button and then export dictionary, give it a name, I will call it sim one. And in the case where you are working, you're going to have that directory. Do not enter to this directory you know, while, it's, while it's saving the mesh, you know, because sometimes personal experience, I have seen that it crash. Okay, so l let it save everything. So see that now it's in frozen. As you enter, you have your case a structure for open phone. You have the mesh, you have everything. So you can guess that at this point, you only need to open those files that are text files. I hope you are well, well familiar how to change it. And you just can update it according to your boundary conditions. Okay. Or you can use the GUI to set up everything like we did in this case. So let's revisit what we did. So if you go into DT, Okay, and using this version, you have access to many versions. So using this one, then solver type. So it's very intuitive. You start to select, okay, and running in, in decomposed power, four cores, you can change the count, different methods. Okay, the time here, I'm going to run just a few iterations. So let me run just 30 iterations, save every 10 iterations and so on, ask it format. So you can visit everything there. Okay, very important now you're here and go into models and this is extremely important. You need to give the location where do you have open phone install in your computer. This doesn't matter if it is Linux or Windows. If it is Linux, you give it here. If it is Windows, you're going to give the location in your in your virtual machine okay so open phone is running using windows subsisting linux and very important you need to use and let me go here so if you don't know how to install windows subsisting linux open phone there there is a video okay in the description that you are going to have it so you need to install open phone in ubuntu okay you need to install ubuntu i use open but i 
I have to install Ubuntu and I just use Ubuntu for that. You install that and also very important, it needs to be the default Linux distribution. So see this asterisk here, means that it's the default one. If it is not the default, uh, and always going to look in another directory and it's not going to work, okay? So be sure to select default Linux distribution, Ubuntu, the one with open for install, and here you need to give the location, okay? This is the location where it is installed. To run, you need to open the Windows subsystem. You can call, close all windows, you need to have that open. So that is a very important step. After you define that, you go diff, so here you have the default parameters. So as you see, you have very robust numerics. Okay. So basically you don't need to change anything there, but it's up to you. Okay. Then you go Laplacian also here, very robust numerics. So I select consistent. I put my own the relaxation. So it's up to you. Then I go here material. Okay. So in material you select the models, whatever you have there, one, coefficients, and so on. So this is up to you. Choose parameters, okay? You have air, if you have multiple uh, <clears throat> faces, you insert another row, row there, and then just add the values, okay? So you, you select the other, so not be beautiful problem. Then you have models, faces, then you go here, okay, you select turbulence models, you have also more options to set up some other models, reactions, and overset. I'm going to do another tutorial about overset, how to do that. Okay, you set a turbulence models, okay, and here you have initialization, you do it here, okay, so it's a little bit hidden, you have it here, your initialization. You go to BC, and in BC, you have boundary conditions, and here all the groups that you created here in geometry, you access that and you can assign your boundary conditions. Okay, so you have now the most commonly used boundary conditions. You might be aware that open for half many. So here in OBX is policing the most commonly used. Okay, so for instance, the AMIP body, it is a wall. Okay, you everything is set up automatically. The ground also a wall. You have the inlet. An outlet, so in the inlet, say that, say that you select here inlet, okay, put the type you want, select, and the value, okay. But I want to go to the wheels, so look at the wheel. So let me go, a slip is a wall, but I select a slip wall, no boundary layer. You can put their symmetries up to you. The wheels, so I think the wheel one is this one, it is a wall. But imagine that this is rotating. So we add a moving wall boundary condition. So that moving wall boundary condition, it is asking, okay? So see here that you select stationary is the normal one. And then when you select this rotating, you need to give those parameters. So you have different there. So see that you need to give the origin, where it's rotating and the vertex normal, no, the, the vector, no? about which the, that, that, that wheel is rotating, and then this is the <coughs> angular velocity, okay? So the, this vehicle is moving now with a velocity of 30 meters per second, and this wheel, the diameter is 0 0.05, if I well recall. So angular velocity is linear velocity divided the diameter, and you get 600 omega, okay? uh okay so we have this um from where do you get this remember at the beginning i talked about the geometry is very important so you select the wheel and here you have properties and you have the position so i got all those coordinates from my cat geometry okay so that's it you have your boundary conditions here you have lagrangian we don't have anything function objects so here you can enable your functions object. So here we have minimum and maximum. For me, this is almost computer, always put it. Also, I'm quite sure that we have forces, force coefficient. So we enable force coefficient. Uh, in this case, when you see this table here, you need to, to give a name now because you can create difference. Okay, so be careful about that. The axis where you want to compute it and so on. So if you want to create another one, insert row and you call it, I don't know, obg2 and then you define it okay so you do that all the time when you see these these tables now to enable that for instance did you have more function objects this is not opt optimization it's fb auction so maybe 
can be a little bit confusing. So I see that FB auctions, you have many of those constraints enabled. I like to use this velocity damping, okay? Just to avoid peak of velocity. So you enable there, there give a more a name and so on. So you have here, this is the proper for optimization to do a join. So you have access there in a very nice GUI, okay? And then at this point, when you set up everything, you are ready to go. So you go here in the, Okay, by the way, also there is the option to go to the cloud. Okay, so later this requires another another video. So actually, as I said at the beginning, I probably want to do something in half an hour and I have been talking and talking here. So you can go to the cloud, but that is another video. So at this point you are done. Dictionary, select your auctions, include your mesh, export if you do some modifications, export everything. Okay, so I'm saving everything. Okay, and then choose to run open phone. So remember that we're in Windows, select Windows existing Linux. And at this point, just click run and off you go. Here you can plug the residuals into fly. I will show you. So now, hopefully, if I didn't make any mistake, it will launch everything. So let's wait at this point. Yeah, we need to wait. So it will look for the Windows existing Linux So sometimes it might take some time to open there. So see that is there. So see that it already have this one. It's not a problem. Uh, running change dictionaries, renaming some patches, I guess. So actually you, 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 you can do, you can look at that. So as you have here, you can see that you can open that file and you can browse here and see what, what is happening. So basically, yeah, renaming patches and so on. So basically what we did, you know, in the GUI, so now it's redistributing, okay, in four cores, so after distributing, it will be, it will do a renumber mesh, and then it will run the simulation. So let's wait for that. So as you see, as you see, it's very simple to set up a case, and basically you can do moving bodies, as I mentioned, also the uh, joint optimization, all those options you have access using this GUI, okay? So basically it's just to enable to work better with OpenFund, okay? We haven't touched OpenFund. What we have touched here is that now you are able to do very good quality meshes, okay? And in CFD, that is your problem, the mesh. So if you manage to master the mesh, for sure you are going to get good solutions. And remember that for the mesh, you need to have a good geometry. Please avoid STLs. Nevertheless, in Enova, you can you can work with STL files. Okay, so now that it is running, I can go here and post processing on the residuals. You can open this and you press plot and you have it there. Double click there, you bring it and see that now it's running smoothly. Okay, number of iterations, and you have also the log files. That is something also I always stress for, again, for open phone community, please always save all your log files. So luckily Enova save a log file of every single command that it runs. So as you go here, you have what is happening. Okay, so everything functional just enable your iteration and you can see what is happening. So let's take a look here, forces and okay, your forces, your minimum and maximum values, velocities, omega. So everything is running smoothly as it should be. Okay, so this is going to run certain iterations, probably. I'm running too much, too many. Okay, it's almost done. If for any reason you want to stop it, just you have this put up window here, just close it, that is in Windows and Linux, it would be a brutal control C that you will have in one terminal window. So just close it and it will stop it, okay? If you want to stop it, not the brutal way. If you want to stop it in, with the right now auction, just open the dictionary. Remember that you have all, it, this is a standard open phone you have you have all the files, so you can open the control did Okay, I modify the auction uh, to, to, to stop it or the whatever, no, here. 
so you can put the right now here stop right now and will stop okay so you can modify everything while running okay at this point i think we okay 30 iterations simulation is over okay as you see even as you saw that quality that it was a little bit high if running smoothly there is no problem so now you have your solution okay you can do the post-processing using part of you so remember that you have everything uh you have here the dot form file open and you can access everything okay so you can use part of you exactly the same way that you have used it okay so a minute Okay, I'm back. I was answering the phone. So what I was saying that you, you, your post-processing, it, it works exactly in the same way. So let me go here and you go to that directory, open there, the compose case. So I'm not going into details. You have your solution or if you don't want to go into no launching as you don't have part of you in your computer you go here post process and you have a light version of part of you installed with Zenova to do the post processing so to do post processing here just go there open the dot form file okay so go to the post process open the dot form file and you're going to access the case so i want to stress that this is a light version okay you don't have all the filters and options you have today available here you have the most important ones but something important also in terms of that this is way much faster than part of you know so when you use part of you it's loading a lot of filter stuff the whole mesh here it doesn't load everything so to to get into the mesh even large meshes it will be kind of a two or three times faster than the normal part of you okay but it's up to you what, what you want to, to, to use. So for instance, I don't want to see this inlet outlet, and then you have all this, and I want to plot there. Okay, it's a little bit tricky to use, I have to say. Okay, pressure, and there you go. You want to have a cut plane. You put it there. Okay, then apply. And you can choose what you want to plot there, okay? So this is just in case that you have part of you or maybe you realize that part of you sometimes can be a little bit slow. Uh, this billing visual visualizer is, is much faster, okay? But, okay, negative point is that it doesn't have all the feature, features that you have in part of you, but it is doing exactly the same that you do, okay, with part of you. So this is it. Okay, by the way, you have there the BCR control, so you can check your solution, okay? your time, you can do the animation, everything uh, in the usual way. Okay, so I think this cover everything. Okay, now which we move from the mixing elbow to the Ahmed, I hope you're getting the point. Okay, very important, just to stress again, get a proper cat geometry. If you have that, you're going to have absolute control at the time of doing your mesh all these options are going to be available you can do local control and so on so we click here in the topology base then we're going to work in another case to use the other approach for dirty geometries okay so i try to avoid this uh, this one as much as possible but sometimes it's, there is no way that is the only you have a very bad geometry or it's too complex or or is that ts yeah stl for a 3d scan nothing to do that maybe you can reverse engineer and and convert that using polys and whatever knowing cat but it doesn't matter so later we're going to address some more advanced concepts so this is it okay uh thank you for your attention and yeah enjoy and see you next videos bye